Now let's talk about what happens in a function as the x values or the input values approach infinity. This is different from what we learned previously where the output values are approaching infinity. Now we're talking about input values kind of to the far right and left along the horizontal axis. Up to this point, we've been looking at limits as x approaches a certain finite value. X approaches 7, X approaches 2135. But we can also look at a function at what it's happening at its at its left hand and right hand extremes as X approaches infinity or negative infinity. That's going to be the focus of what we're doing now. So the key here is instead of the X value approaching some finite number, we're looking at what's happening at the extreme left or right horizontally on the function. Talking about limits at infinity. Let's look at an example of a function, and you'll notice the difference here. X is not approaching some finite number, it's approaching infinity. The limit of 3X squared over X squared plus 1 as X approaches infinity. And if we did this numerically, and we pick values that get closer and closer to infinity, there is no right-hand side here. We're going to approach it from the left only. If you picked a value of 10 and put it in, you get 2.97. If you picked a value of 100 for x, you get 2.9997. I think we can pretty well see already this thing's approaching 3. Actually, it never completely gets to 3. Now, your calculator will probably give up and declare it to be 3, but it never actually gets there. And what's happening is, as x gets bigger and bigger, this x squared term really takes over. And so x squared and x squared plus 1, as x gets gigantic, are virtually the same thing, and this whole part cancels out, leaving us with 3. Now let's look at that graphically. So here's a look at that function, 3x squared over x squared plus 1, from negative 10 to positive 10. You can see the function both on the positive and the negative side. As x gets larger, it gets closer and closer to 3. Does that behavior continue? And even with extreme zoom, it's reaching that limit of y equals 3, and never getting past it. So let's look at an important theorem regarding limits that occur as x approaches infinity. Let's take a number r, a positive rational number, and a number c that's a number. Then the limit as x approaches infinity of c over x to the r power is going to be 0. And that's because as x approaches infinity, any number divided by what winds up being infinity is going to be zero. This is also holding true for negative numbers. So for example, the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity is going to be zero. Because as x gets very, very large, this number tends toward zero. The limit of 7 over x squared as x approaches infinity is also going to be zero. In fact, it's going to get to zero towards zero a lot faster than the previous function because we're squaring the denominator. Let's look at an example. The limit of 5 minus 2 over x squared as x approaches infinity, it's going to be 5. Well, why? Let's break it into parts. The limit of 5 is just 5. It doesn't matter what x is. But that second part, the limit of 2 over x squared, as x approaches infinity, this part goes to 0 because the limit of 2 over x squared winds up getting very, very close to 0 as x gets large. It becomes 5 minus 0 when you, and you can subtract the limits and get 5. One way to handle analytically finding limits of rational functions as x approaches infinity, such as this one, is by dividing by the highest power of x. Well, here x is to the first power in both the numerator and the denominator. So let's divide every term in there by x. And another way to do that is by multiplying by 1 over x. When we multiply each term by 1 over x, or in other words, divide each term by x, here's what we get. The 2x term divided by x minus 1 over x and in the denominator, x over x plus 1 over x. Now we can evaluate each of those subparts individually. Well, the x's cancel out here, and we're left in limit of 2. The limit of 1 over x, well, we're going to get to that in a minute. Here the x's cancel out, we get 1, and then 1 over x. We can evaluate these parts as well. 
The limit of 2 is just 2, but the limit of 1 over x, we've already got a theorem for that, as x approaches infinity, is 0. Similarly, for the denominator, we get 1 plus 0, because, again, the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity is 0. When we simplify that, we get 2. And you can verify that graphically or numerically as well. So the limit of this function, this rational function, because we've divided each term by x, is 2. That leads to some patterns, which hopefully you've already explored in class. Three rules for limits at infinity. If the numerator exponent is greater than the denominator exponent, then the limit is either infinity or negative infinity. It's going to increase or decrease without bound. The reason for this is that the numerator power takes over at very large values of x. And since the numerator is always going to be larger than the denominator, the function will continue to get larger and larger. If the numerator exponent is less than the denominator exponent, then the denominator is going to get bigger and take over, and the limit is going to be 0. And this can sometimes be misleading. Numerator powers are very large. If the denominator power is larger, at large values of x, it is going to take over, and eventually that function will reach 0. If the numerator and denominator exponent are the same, then the limit is going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients. And I should mention, we're talking about the leading power. We're talking about the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. It is the highest power that you find in the, either of those. So third rule, if the numerator's exponent and the denominator's exponent are the same, then the limit is the ratio of the coefficients. Let's look at some examples. Here's that first function we look. We know the limit's going to be 3 from our previous example, but here's why. Because the numerator and denominator powers are the same, we're going to look at that leading coefficients, 3 over 1, so it's 3. The limit of this function as x approaches negative infinity. Well, the denominator power is greater than the numerator power, so eventually this is going to get much larger than the numerator, and it's going to go to 0. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of this function, the terms are a little bit out of order here, so you've got to be careful. Here the leading term is 8x to the third. So this, the degree of the numerator is 3, the degree of the denominator is 2. Therefore, the numerator is going to take over, and this function is always going to get larger and larger. In fact, it's going to approach negative infinity because at negative values of x, this term is going to get much bigger than that term. Let's look at this one. Go ahead and distribute out to find out what the leading term is here. Interestingly enough, all the other terms don't matter. It's only the highest degree terms that matter because they dominate as x gets very, very large. Here the highest degree term is 40x squared. So 40x squared and 6x squared, powers are the same, the leading powers, so our answer is going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients, in this case, 40 divided by 6. And we can simplify that down to 20 over 3. So the limit of this function, as x approaches infinity, is 20 over 3. Let's look at limits as x approaches infinity of the trig functions as well. The fact is, the limit doesn't exist for any of these, because all of these repeat themselves over and over infinitely, even as x gets very large, those same cycles continue, never reaching a defined limit. A function that has a limit at infinity is going to also have a horizontal asymptote. This is, becomes the limiting value of the function. And that horizontal asymptote can be defined by the line y equals l, where l is the limit of the function. And a, a function is going to have a horizontal asymptote if the limit of the function as x approaches infinity is some finite value l. Like our original function had a limit of 3. It would have a horizontal asymptote at 3. A horizontal asymptotes also occur where the limit of the function as it appro x approaches negative infinity is l. And a function can have multiple horizontal asymptotes. In other words, to find the horizontal asymptote of a function, you can take the limit as x approaches infinity and negative infinity.
So that's limits of infinity. What's happening to a function in its extreme right hand and left hand values? And you've figured out using numeric, analytic, and graphical tools how to determine that.